Right, we have built the portable solar system model, so there are a few principles which we need to look at in order to make the use of it more effective. Now, it has been designed to overcome the mental gymnastics of standing on an apparently flat level ground and having to relate to a celestial world where there is no up or down and where the platform from which we view the solar system is a round ball and this round ball is spinning. The portable solar system model reproduces not only the current positions of the planets in the solar system but it allows the model solar system to be orientated in the same way as the real solar system is. In this position the model is orientated so that the part of the surface of the Earth where we are standing on, which in this case is Africa, so that that surface is level with the surface upon which I am standing. That makes it easier to understand what is being seen without the mental uh, gymnastics. Now this in turn means that the directions on the model in which the planets and the Sun lie are the same as the directions to the real planets and to the real Sun. For instance here we have Africa and if I would look towards my west and there is west I would see the Sun in that direction in the evening. I would see Mars and I would see Saturn up in that direction which is where they really are at the moment above the western horizon. Now the plane of this of the orbits here is tilted at somewhere between uh, 45 degrees and, and and vertical and this more or less sort of matches the plane of the galaxy as seen from a point somewhere say up to 45 degrees south or north of the equator. In this position we have the axis of the Earth which really is here and it's more or less the same as the axis through the Sun and we have that axis is more or less at the same angle as the axis of the Earth from our vantage point here over Africa. Now what we need to do with this model is point the model towards the south. If it is actually pointed towards the south then that axis is actually going to then be parallel to the Earth's axis. If the Earth's axis is there then our model's axis is also there. Now with the observers back towards the south, there is south, when they look at the solar system they will see the planets all moving in a clockwise direction. Notice the direction of rotation so we have the planets moving in a clockwise direction. The orbits of the planets are also in a clockwise direction except for one uh, or two exceptions say Venus and perhaps Uranus which have got slightly strange uh, rotations. Right, now we need to see how the model can be used to look at the planets and at the sky at different times of the day in ways that we do not uh, feel we have to do mental contortions to stand upside down. So what we'll do first of all is move the model to a situation that we are all very familiar with and this is where we have midday and there you are standing on your earth, there's your western and there's your eastern horizon and if you look straight up into the sky what you normally see is you see the Sun of course. Now what we can see on this model is that we also have several planets up above our horizon at the time but we cannot see them because not because the Sun is shining is what you would naturally think but indirectly yes the Sun shines and makes our atmosphere glow blue which we can't see through. If you were on the Moon and were able to block out the Sun you would actually be able to see bright stars uh, around it in the dark sky. So right, here we have the Earth and the Earth turns in a clockwise direction from our southern perspective which means that you 
taking a ride on the earth as it turns would move with it it's with its rotation so here we get into the first point where you are standing on your side and this becomes a little bit uncomfortable mentally so what we rather do is we turn the model and let's just recap that's where you were standing looking at the sun above you and the earth turned and turned and turned and turned until eventually below the western horizon the sun set so from your point of view on earth the sun set in that direction and with the model orientated correctly that is where the sun would set so the earth continues into the evening and it rotates and rotates and rotates and eventually it gets to the point where it is on the opposite side of the earth to the sun so that is your midnight but once again you are standing sideways and so let's move the model so that you are more comfortable standing upright so there we are this is our midnight sky and these are the two planets in this particular configuration of the model that would be above the western and eastern horizons the earth continues to turn as it begins to approach dawn and here once again we can see here we are standing on our side so to become more mentally comfortable we rotate the model again to a position which is where we can see what it looks like in the morning so here to recap here we turn from our midnight position and we'd see some planets rising in the morning sky until eventually the sun will rise above the eastern horizon which is in that direction behind me so that little explanation gives you an idea of how the model is used to help you keep a sense of orientation that you are comfortable with right now looking at the model you will notice that say from earth the orbital directions of the planets make it look as though they are moving from our left to our right overhead but we are familiar with the fact that the planets move from east in the morning and across to west in the evening which seems to contradict what we've seen now but what we've got to remember is that the motion that we are seeing now uh, as we see each evening and through the night and through the day with the sun coming over is due to the rotation of the earth the other movement that I was talking about from left to our right is due to the planets moving along their orbits and against the background stars which are way in the distance we will see them moving against that background star slowly from night to night and from month to month further and further towards the right or towards the east now it is very important that we point out now that the model is not to scale if we were to try and draw, put, build the model to scale we would have the sun in the middle here at about the size of a P and we'd have Neptune it would fit inside the final hoop so you'll agree that that is totally impractical not only that but the inner planets up to Mars would probably fit into a space only about that far away from the sun so once again you can see that that is totally impractical so it is important to bear that in mind and to mention that to observers even though it is not in to scale it nevertheless does not seriously affect the angles that we look at at the planets the principle is uh, quite correct and valid and the model works now there are two obvious observing situations say in the evening or early in the morning now the evening situation sees the earth to the right of the sun and in that situation an observer and there is our little observer standing on the earth would see the sun in the west remember we have a flat surface over here which is apparently flat and it corresponds to the flat surface that we are standing on so no need for mental gymnastics now in the morning situation we can look at that as well and what we'll do is rotate the model and we'll turn earth around so that once again we have 
Africa on top and there we have Africa on top and level corresponding to the ground that we are standing on and from there we would have the situation where our observer standing upright on the earth sees the Sun in their easterly direction so this is to the east of the earth and there we have the Sun so those are the two major uh, situations that we have now I think it's just important also just to mention that this stick here can be used as a pointer but its main function is to operate as an artificial horizon so what we are looking at here is the earth rotating and this is what the horizon would be doing and in this instance here we can see as the horizon continues to turn that we have the Sun rising over the eastern horizon right we have gone through the principles of the portable solar system and understanding those principles of the portable solar system will help you to get the best use out of it